All right, guys, welcome to the show. We are talking about five must-have players for Fantasy Football 2023. Yes, Fantasy Football is in full flow. We are ready to go. The NFL draft is settled, and now we are laying out the depth charts here, making sure you guys draft the optimal players in each round. And that's why I created the 16-round draft solution. Don't walk. Run right now and grab the 16-round draft solution. Sleepers, breakouts, Opto players drafting each round, Dynasty, and so much more in a video training. No more copy and paste rankings. This is not based on rankings. It's based on the Opto players to draft in each round, and of course, players to avoid in each round. Everything is there for you, laid out on a silver platter, giving you the championship. Get 16 rounds. I've linked it here below. Use code WIN to save on this course. Okay, guys? The solution. It's not even a draft kit. It's a solution. So make sure you guys get it. I've linked it below. Now, I'm excited here. We're talking five players you must have. Now, understand here, guys, these are like Captain Obvious picks. Well, most of them anyway. One of them not so much because in the early rounds, you want to secure your, your, your roster and make sure you have secure players early on. You don't want to end up with a bunch of guys that may, you know, fall apart early. Like last year, everyone told you Jonathan Taylor round one, right? But was Jonathan Taylor a solution? No, I said he declined. Everyone told you Cooper Cup. I'm like, nah, Cooper Cup's going to get hurt. Sure enough, he gets hurt. Well, you're saying, well, Joe, you can't predict injury. How do you how do you predict injury? Well, you can, because what goes up must come down. And if you're force-fed every single game, your probability of getting injured is very high. And if you're coming off a pinnacle season, there's a high probability you're going to either get hurt or simply just naturally regress and have a Super Bowl hangover, which, again, I, t I all predicted with Cooper Cup. So there were so many signs saying Cooper Cup was going to decline. And that's just another example. There was Dalvin Cook and on and on and on and on. I keep going with some of the other mistakes, and including everyone kept Saquon outside the top 10. I told you to draft Saquon last year, and there were so many more examples. So when I talk about these five must-haves, understand, guys, that these guys are in a good position to succeed, but there's other players that are in a good position to succeed, but these guys jumped out at me as must-haves, Okay. So let's dive into this. Yes, you're going to pay high for them, but there's a reason for it, okay? Now, I'm in the middle of a huge money draft. Yes, I'm drafting in April and May. Uh, I start at the end of April here, and it's going into the early May. The draft, draft it's a six-hour slow draft, and I've got a draft going. And I'll tell you, the first guy here that the must-have, I actually drafted in the second round because I want to secure and anchor my quarterback. Now, typically, I go robust RB, but I'll tell you why I'm actually – thinking of going a quarterback this year. To get all this is laid out in the 16-round draft solution in way more detail. <clears throat> but I will tell you this. I, the first must-have is Josh Allen because there's a lot of uncertainty at the quarterback position, right? You've got all these new rookie quarterbacks come in. You've got quarter, second-year quarterbacks, including Kenny Pickett, that's that are coming out now and starting. It's like we're not, we haven't seen them perform. On what level are they going to perform on? Are they going to be solid quarterbacks? Even Trevor Lawrence, who had a good year last year, is he going to crush it this year? And I think Trevor Lawrence does have a good year. But a lot of uncertainty. we got Aaron Rodgers moving to the Jets. Will he thrive? Will Russell Wilson bounce back? So many question marks at the quarterback position. That's why certainty at the position is important. And, and I'm willing to pay a second-round pick for Josh Allen for the blanket of the security. That's why he's a must-have for the security, right? And another thing is I can still get value at running back later. There's a lot of rookies that are in a prime position to succeed. Rookie running backs. Again, all this is in 16 rounds. And it, I will be doing some videos here, of course, on this channel. So make sure you guys subscribe and hit the thumbs up as well. It helps the channel reach more people. Hopefully not your league mates, like I always say. So again, guys, you can get value at running back. So I'm almost tempted, and I am tempted, I did it in one league, to get Allen in the second round because of the uncertainty at the quarterback position. You've got your three guys. You have Mahomes, Hurts, and Allen. <clears throat> and then after that, it's a bit of a crapshoot. You're going to get some secure numbers from guys like Dak, maybe Lamar Jackson. You know, Deshaun Watson could be solid. Trevor Lawrence I like. But you don't get that safety and security that you're getting with like a Mahomes, a Hurts, and an Allen. I, I really like Allen. He's a must-have for me in the second round. Okay? Very, very – I want to be very clear on that, Okay? You can still go robust RB and not have to pay three rounds to get them. Does that make sense? You can still go robust RB, and I did. And I, I'll, we'll get that to, to that in a second. Now, the other guy I must have is Bijan Robinson. Now, Bijan is high on the Conceit Sheeps' rankings. They're all riding him. But then again, they rode Clyde Edwards a He was a first-round pick a couple years ago, and I said, be careful with a I don't trust him on the Chiefs. 
I don't know. Like, I don't feel warm and fuzzy about it, but everybody told you a layer, a layer to the air, whatever they were saying. Like, you got to draft him. I think Bijan really is good, unlike Clyde Edwards Alaire. Bijan is a prototypical running back. He's got the build. He's, you know, he's got 66 feet, 215 pounds, amazing cutting ability, great vision, burst, explosiveness, quick off the line. He's got, you know, breaking tackles. He's, he's just absolutely amazing, right? He averaged 6.1 yards per carry in college last year, 1,580 yards, 258 attempts. The guy was getting it done all around, <clears throat> okay? So, Bijan is the guy who was an eighth overall pick first round by the Atlanta Falcons. He is a must-have, and he's going to eat. I've got him as the first overall running back. I was debating between him and Taylor. What turned me off about Taylor is the new quarterback, Richardson, who is a running back within his own right. He's like, what, 6'4", 250 pounds? Like, the guy is a running back. He's going to be stealing a lot of volume from Taylor. I don't think that's a good thing. Either way, I still like Taylor in a contract year. By Jan is just way more appealing to me simply because of the talent, the high draft capital, the opportunity. If they want to win, they're going to run their rest running back. Now, they've got a quarterback who is questionable, to say the least, with Desmond Ritter, who we don't know how well he's going to throw. So he's going to rely a lot on the checkdowns and the short passes to By Jan inflating his value as well now they got Algier there who really got screwed because he had a thousand yards rushing here's a fifth round pick and he still did pretty well they put him in the back seat understandably so if you get an opportunity to get a workhorse why not do it by Jan easily getting a 220 attempt floor this year 1200 yards I would say and at least 10 touchdowns on the ground love the opportunity I've got him as the 101 right now again very early but I absolutely love the opportunity okay Number three here, this one isn't as obvious because a lot of people are sleeping on him, and I ended up getting him in the third round. The, you know, the guy I'm talking about is Najee Harris. Love, love, love Najee Harris, and he is being copied and pasted directly. Let's talk about it. Last year, everybody was riding him because he had a good year prior. The year prior, he finished top three with 307 attempts on the ground, 1,200 yards, only averaged 3.8 yards per carry, Seven touchdowns, 74 receptions, a lot of check downs with Big Ben. So last year, everyone was high on him. And I said, you know what? I was high on more high on him in his rookie year. There might be a regression. Sure enough, there was a regression. He finished outside, you know, the top 10. It is what it is. Had a mediocre year. What he finished 14th last year, 3.8 yards per carry, just over a thousand yards, still 41 receptions. His receptions went down. Now, the reason I love Najee Harris this year is because he is nearing a contract year. That's number one. Number two, Kenny Pickett is now in a position where he is the starting quarterback. He is settled in. He has come out and said, I want to be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So you got Pickett integrated. You got Najee Harris working towards the contract. He's got to buckle down and get serious. You got one of, if not the best coach in the NFL who believes in his running back and doesn't like a committee. It's Mike and Mike Tomlin. And Mike, I like Mike Tomlin a lot for that. That integrity towards his running backs so expect volume to be there right and he could only do better than last year so there was a quarterback jumble last year it was, it was a mess you know Pickett was not integrated so now they are there and finally the most important thing they drafted a tight end relatively early early in Daryl Washington and Broderick what is this Broderick Jones is it James or Jones they got one of the top O-line men Broderick early on so they improved and beefed up that old line for the focal point to protect Kenny Pickett and of course give Najee Harris an opportunity to run wild so I love this getting a workhorse running back in the third round that is amazing value his ADP should shoot up as you hear more reports of him doing really well in camp again you're getting a workhorse and then again going back to my point with Josh Allen <clears throat> again we're talking fantasy football draft strategy here why not go Allen too? You know, go buy Jen Allen, then get Najee, or go Jonathan Taylor, Hurts, and then get a Najee in round three. Again, you're getting an RB1 in round three. It's a no-brainer to me. And I said this last year with Saquon Barkley. I was getting him in the second round, which was phenomenal. <clears throat> so why not get Saquon round two, right, and get your, you know, I had Henry round one last year. So, again, guys, tons of value, and he's a must-have for me based on everything I said and the round you get him, okay? Number four here, I'm on Ross St. Brown. Listen, the guy's prime for volume. You know, when you look at that offense, you know, you've got the rookie coming. you got Montgomery there. You know, Swift has now been sh shipped out. 
So, you know, you've got Gibbs, and I, I do like Gibbs, but, you know, you got to understand there might be a committee, and Jameson Williams is now suspended. He will be suspended probably, I'm going to say, six games, you know, for bet- betting and all that stuff. So Amon Ra, who's got the report, is primed for a big season, and the thing is, he was value last year. Now the Kinships are riding him. But if you are looking for a wide receiver in and around the second round, maybe I want to say early first, second round is kind of fair price for him. Then you got to go him just based on safety and security. And again, it's like I like his value last year, so I may fade him this year, but he's a must have if you're looking for a wide receiver in the early rounds because he's going to be consistent. He's going to be safe. He was one of the top target getters with 146 targets last year, 106 receptions. And now he's more integrated. He's more into the system now. And he's going to be heavily relied on to be a consistent. Um, he's going to be soaking up targets. He's going to be a target monster. So only six touchdowns. I, I expect that to pr- improve this year. But uh, he finished seventh last year. He's sitting eighth in PPR amongst the Kinshipsis. Again, they're riding him, copying and pacing him from last year. Again, he's a good receiver. I was on him last year. 16 rounders were on him last year. This year, everyone is, but he is a must-have if you want that early wide receiver. And finally, the last one here, and again, I'm surprised the Kinshutes have caught on to him, but Garrett Wilson, who's sitting ninth right now, 147 targets, 83 receptions last year, just over 1,000 yards, 1,103, four touchdowns, and he gets an upgrade at quarterback. With Zach Wilson and Mike White last year throwing the ball, he's got an upgrade at quarterback. This guy was a first-round pick you know, last year. 10th overall, six foot 192, great body control, comes down with the ball, strong hands, good right runner. Garrett Wilson will eat this year on the Jets. They didn't draft a top wide receiver. They believe in him. And I don't like the other targets there at all. Lazard, I'm not sold on it at all. He sucks. Rodgers will throw. This will be an amazing connection. I'm excited. So second round is what you're going to have to pay, unfortunately. But if you want a wide receiver that's going to be primed to have a good year, this is it. Now, there is a question mark about Aaron Rodgers doing well with New York because we saw the def- you know, the f- the failure of Russell Wilson in Denver, and that's very possible. That is the only issue. Will a 40-year-old body on a new team hold up in Aaron Rodgers? What does he have left? I think Aaron Rodgers is good enough to feed the ball to Garrett Wilson consistently and make him a top-10 receiver. So if you want him in the second round, he is a must-have, okay? So five quick must-haves for you guys in the early rounds. Josh Allen, by Jan Robinson, Najee Harris, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Garrett Wilson, guys. Got to draft them. If you want the sleepers, breakout, dynasty players, everything in one spot, get 16 rounds. I've linked it below. Use code WIN to save. All right, guys? I've linked it below. Subscribe, thumbs up. I'll see you guys in more videos, fantasy in full force. We'll talk soon. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. More coming your way. I am out.